Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, B1B Flyer here. In this video, I'm going to show you a very easy way to create an alpine camouflage pattern using a variety of basic techniques. The great thing about this process is that you can tailor it to your own preferences throughout and aren't tied to any specific type of paint. And while the results will look a bit basic in some ways, I promise that if you have a lance or more of these all painted on the table, they're going to look great. I'll be using Pro Acryl Camo Green and Vallejo Model Color Middle Stone, Ice Yellow, and Off White. I've got Citadel Basilicanum Gray Contrast Paint mixed 50-50 with Contrast Medium for my shading wash, as well as an Army Painter Speed Paint Gravelord Gray for quick details. None of these are mandatory, so if you don't have the contrast paint or access to speed paint, you can use whatever black wash you have available to you. The brushes I'll be using are part of the trick to getting the camo pattern. I've taken some old worn synthetic brushes of various sizes, and in the case of my smallest brush, cut the bristles down straight across to create a stipple brush. A small flat brush will also work well for this, but keep in mind that stippling is very hard on a brush, so it's best to use cheaper, synthetic, and worn out brushes for this process. I have a good size brush I like to use for applying washes, a round eye makeup brush for dry brushing, and a Monument Hobbies Zero Synthetic for finer detail work. I've started by priming my miniature with white primer. I used my airbrush as it's more convenient for me, but spray can primers are just fine as long as you can get good even coverage. If you don't, just get a quick thin coat of white brushed on afterwards and that'll do the trick in setting up the base color. As you can see, I'm using that cut down synthetic brush to gently stipple my camo green color. I'm not using a paper towel on this step, simply unloading the paint just a bit on the palette before stippling. I'm not being too forceful with it at first, just setting the pattern and feeling out how I want the green areas to sit on the model. The point of the stipple brush is to leave a fuzzy and somewhat random edge to the green. Don't worry if you have too much paint and it doesn't work at first. Feel out the brush technique and moving a little less paint around on the model and you'll pick this method up easily. As I apply the green, I'm thinking about the brown I'll add later, so I'm leaving space between the areas to show enough white. This is completely subjective, and I have some example pics of mechs painted like this with less white that I'll show towards the end of the video so you can see the difference. I'm not worried about completely even coverage right now either. A bit of white and uneven paint is fine if you like, but if you want a darker, more consistent look, go back over the initial application to strengthen the pigment. If you have some deep or hard to reach areas, you may need to grab a regular brush to get the paint into those spots, but you can take care of that once you've set the pattern. If you want to use a small piece of foam to dab the edges of all the green in some areas because that's easy for you, then by all means go that route. I do find that sometimes it's difficult to get the foam into some tighter spaces, but the visible top and sides of the model should be easy to dab away at. The objective of this first step isn't to create a perfect stripe or splatter pattern. It's simply to have fun applying some camo patterns without stressing or overthinking the process. You can always come back with some white to fix any areas you think got away from you, and since we have another color as well as a shading wash to still apply, they'll be concealed nicely in the overall appearance of the mini. With the green applied, you can see there's plenty of soft edges and variation in the green, and even some spots where I didn't touch up the mist white that's showing through. It's time to repeat the process with a brown. I'm using Middlestone because I like the lighter appearance it has after the coverage wash is dry. I'm just repeating the same method as with the green, but with less surface area coverage. I'm stippling and swiping, and then letting the color dry as I move to another spot so I can see what the color will look like before I go back and add more brown. If you prefer a different pattern and appearance, you can add more or less than I did, or none at all if you prefer. The tone of the brown is completely up to you as well, even adding a third color if you feel like it. I'm predominantly keeping my brown connected to the green in most areas but don't feel limited by that if you want to have some standalone brown areas or you want a more mottled look and want the brown over the top of the green. These are just a few of the different ways you can go about this camo process and get a similar but unique result. As before, if you find you have too much going on and not enough white or in this case green still present, 
Just go in with your stipple brush and hit it with the necessary color after the brown is finished. Because of the ease of touch-ups, there really shouldn't be any reason to have to strip and start this process over again if something doesn't look right to you. Again, it's low stress and about having fun. As with the finished green, the brown has some nice random edges and areas where there's still white showing that I'm not worried about. Now the model is ready for a coverage wash. I'm using my trusty old wash brush to apply a 50-50 mix of contrast basilicanum gray and contrast medium. I'm treating it like any other overall wash application and starting at the top and working my way down bit by bit, trying to keep the wet edge progressing downward to prevent pooling and drying. Why am I using contrast paint as a wash? I really like the shading it gets over all the panel recesses while also achieving a bit of modulation on the surfaces and I like the slightly thicker consistency. It's not perfect, but the visual effect when it's dry is more than satisfactory for a camo scheme that you want done with minimal effort. There's nothing wrong with using a traditional wash for this step, so if you like to use an army painter dark tone or a nuln oil, then by all means use what you like. The goal of this step is to shade the recesses, tie the two colors and white together with shades of gray, while darkening them to set up for the next step where we dry brush the highlights. It doesn't matter what wash you use, you'll always need to keep an eye on it and check for pooling, missed spots, and uneven coverage. Just because you looked the model over at the end of applying the wash doesn't mean that a few minutes later there won't be a huge puddle at the feet or in an arm or leg joint. So if you're painting more than one model at the time with this process, which I hope you are, then as you finish applying the wash to your second model, go back and look at the first one. This should be enough time to have let the wash settle and still let you be efficient with your time during the paint session. No matter what wash you use, you'll want to make sure your models are completely dry before moving on. This is an ideal step to complete before the end of an evening paint session, or a good time to go get into some other project or grab a bite to eat. As you can see, the wash really ties the scheme together with the shaded recesses and darker tones while still preserving the color pattern. I must apologize for this missed step. You can see on my palette that there's iced yellow just sitting there not being used. Well, that's because when I recorded the step prior to dry brushing the white, it was completely out of focus for the entire three minutes. I'll describe to you what I did as the white dry brush is being accomplished, and that should suffice. Any complaints about this lack of content can be directed to my secretary in the comment section below. Using my round eye makeup brush, I add a bit of paint and then aggressively swipe and roll the brush on a paper towel to remove the majority of the pigment. With the yellow, I'm trying to only apply the color to the brown and green areas, but if some gets on the white, it's not anything that is of concern. Using downward brush strokes and some side to side as well, I want to bring up the raised edges on the green and brown with the yellow. If you don't have this color, a light cream or beige would also work just fine. You can skip this and simply use white over the entire model but I think the use of yellow combined with not trying to get the white anywhere but on the white areas helps reduce that rougher appearance that can happen sometimes when a model is dry brushed heavily with a single color. Now onto the white. Do the same thing as with the yellow, but focus on keeping the majority of effort on the white areas. I'm using a big brush and this is a small model. So if you haven't figured it out by now, this isn't a precision task. If you want to use a smaller dry brush to target areas more accurately, then by all means go that route. I like that I get a bit of yellow mixed in with the white in some spots, as well as white overlapping the greens and browns to really merge the colors together in a cohesive scheme. You can take this as far as you want with regards to intensity, so if you just want a little bit of work up for the white, stop when you're happy in the final appearance, as this is the last major step in the paint process. Here's where I chose to stop dry brushing and the model has a nice soft edge look with a weathered appearance. I'm not going to show the remaining detailed process on the model because basing, weapon, and cockpit tutorials are available to see in separate videos, but I wanted to quickly cover the use of an Army Painter speed paint to do some quick details. Because the scheme is predominantly white and light colors, this is a great opportunity to use a speed paint to bring out a few areas to contrast the camo. Of course, that's counterproductive in real world applications, but this is a tiny model, so a few contrasting areas will go a long way in making it look much better. I'm going to take my detail brush and some Gravelord Gray 
and apply it to any weapon barrel, exhaust vent, or missile launcher to add a shadow, carbon buildup, or dulled metal look. It's not specific at all, but when you see how it looks at the end, you'll understand the effect. Just apply a layer of speed paint to each area and possibly work it into any adjoining recesses and let it do its thing. Don't mess with it much once it's set or you risk tearing the paint as it dries and it will be a bit of a hassle to fix it. I like to just put it on and give it a minute or two and then remove a sh or shift any of the heavy pooling and leave it to dry. You could also use a thinned dark gray, a contrast paint, or metallics if that's what you like to do. The point is to grab a few areas and make them stand out against the model to draw your eye in. As you can see, there's a big difference in the appearance made with just a small bit of work. I completed the model by adding decals by fighting Piranha Graphics, jeweled the cockpits and lasers, and based the model with some sand painted dark brown, and then a few tufts of static grass covered with Citadel, Valhalla, and Blizzard for easy snow. I mentioned before that I had pictures of other models done in the same scheme, but with more green and brown, and these were completed by my friend Roy after he saw my test model and wanted to copy the scheme. He took my painting notes and grabbed the same paints, and when I next saw him, these were what he had turned out. Roy's an accomplished painter, and he said it was very easy to pull off and he really likes the results achieved for the small amount of work put in. I think they turned out great, and I look forward to seeing other folks in the community try this method out and post their pictures on the various Battletech social media pages. Thanks again to Roy Carl for sharing his pictures. Tex, please take us out. We certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and leave your questions or comments below. Follow us on Facebook at Battletech Camo Specs Online. Check out our website at camospecs.com. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Heat critical. Shutdown imminent. Time for Pop-Tarts.